So when I'm streaming, the most commonly asked question is, Ronki, should I spend my money on a liver dagger or a flower of truth? Or something like, should I buy a mage setup or an archer setup? And in this video, I'm going to try to answer most of your questions and try to inform you so you can make the correct decision with your money. So there's one thing I want to make very clear before I actually start the video. This guide is not a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to progress in the game. Like, you should buy a liver dagger, and then you should buy a giant sword, and then a Hyperion. No, no, it's not like that at all. It's more just going to be educating you on what to buy to help progress your profile as quickly as possible, and then also, when you're buying stuff, how to save more money. But at the end of the day, it is your money. So it is your choice about what you want to buy. And Skyblock has so many different routes in what you can do, so there's not really a wrong decision per se. Just before the video starts, if you enjoy my content and find it useful, then you know what, consider subscribing, because I'd really appreciate it. Also, I know I say this every time, but join my Discord, we do 10 million coin giveaways all the time, so if you want a chance to win some free money, then go ahead and link is in the description. And with that, let's get on with the video. So for my first point, I think all of you Jujunons probably saw this coming. And what I want to say is, is that progressing in Skyblock is a lot more than just going from one cool weapon to another cool weapon and getting more expensive gear. A massive part of Skyblock is what I call your base stats. These are things like your skills, your slayers, your talismans, your minions, just everything that makes up your profile. And ultimately, the Skyblock level system is a great way to see how far you progress in the game and what your base skills are like. Honestly, I think for every coin that you spend on gear, you should also spend a coin on something on your base skills and have it as a 50-50 split. For me, minions and unlucky minion slots are heavily overlooked in all stages of the game. These clay minions, as you can see behind me, provide a really, really stable source of profit. And although it's only about 1 billion coins a day, if you see my fishing collection for clay, you can see I've collected, you know, quite a bit of clay. All of those clay minions working in the background have probably given me around 600 to 700 million coins. And how much did I pay for them, do you ask? Probably about 30 million coins. Obviously, the minion slots were a bit expensive as well, as I probably invested around 100 million coins or so into minion slots. Although that's not even that much. Although, trust me, although investing into minions and minion slots may feel like a massive money sink, it's definitely going to pay off in the months to come. And not only this, but minions are fantastic in leveling up skills that you don't actually want to level up. For instance, from these clay minions alone, I've got fishing 42, and that's way higher than most people, and I don't fish that much. But if I just place loads and loads of melee minions down, then I'm sure I'd be a way higher farming level as well. Now the other situation where I see this massive underleveling is in slayers. Now typically, people don't really level up slayers, they only level up slayers when they actually want something from that specific slayer. And I think the best example of this, clearly, is the Juju Shortbow. As you probably all know, the requirement was changed from Enderman Slayer 3 to Enderman Slayer 5. And do you know how many tickets there are for Tier 3 and Tier 4 carries there are on Skyblock Maniacs? Yeah, there's a lot, I can tell you that. And this is not just for the Juju Shortbow, this is for anything. For instance, when someone wants an Axe of the Shredded, they'll grant a Zombie Slayer 8. However, my point here is that people don't grind slayers because it gives them base skills, they just grind it for items they need. And to be honest, slayers unlock so many items that are not necessarily your primary weapon, but things like healing items and also natural health regen, and you get a load of stats of it as well, and a bunch of free talismans along the way. Next up, I'm going to be talking about accessories. Now, my magical power is really not that great, but it's still, I can assure you, better than the average Jujunon. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating necessarily for you to go and buy the 300 million coin talismans when you only have a billion coin net worth. But if your most expensive talisman is 5 mil and you have a 1 billion coin net worth, then yeah, there, there, there is a problem there. After you've unlocked most of the cheap talismans through stuff like collections and other things like slayers as well, then it's usually more cost efficient to start buying recoms to start recombobulating your talismans instead of just going buying the ultra expensive ones which might not necessarily give you that many buffs. To be honest, a big portion of the money that you make should go into investing into accessories. And I'm sure that a lot of people who maybe put some money 
from buying their next new cool weapon into some of the money that goes into buying accessories. The point that I'm trying to make here is that people in general spend too much money on buying the next cool weapon or the next cool armor or pet and not enough money into buying skills and slayers. And this is absolutely fine, but ultimately you're going to be probably progressing through the game probably quicker if you invest money into these sort of base stats. Having high skills, especially combat, and having a really really high magical power absolutely carries you in this game far more than having the best cool new weapon. So assuming that you spread some money out of your gears and minion slots and things like that, now we're going to come to choosing what gear is right for you. Now picture this, you're debating whether you want to buy an archer setup or a mage setup. You look in the forums everywhere and everyone's saying different things and you don't know what to do. And trust me, if you're in that situation, then don't worry, because I've been there a lot. Even if all of your friends or your guildmates or whatever are telling you to buy a certain weapon, you should look at it from your own perspective, not for somebody else's, because you're playing your own game. But to carry on with my little example, you can tell the Hyperion or the Mage setup is really really good for clearing and good for frag running and things like that. However, I know that if I play Archer, I probably have a better time in Master Mode and with a melee setup, I can probably do Slayers easier as well. Now instead of asking yourself, what if I was Kata 50 or what if I had 10,000 hours to dedicate to this game, you should just look at what do I enjoy playing the most. If you ask yourself that question and you realise, well, I actually hate Archer and I don't really like Master Mode either and playing with the funny Boom Boom Sword is more fun, then there's no reason for you to go and pick an Archer setup. If I look in the opposite side, if I'm thinking, well, if I buy Hyperion, then that's going to be really, really good for frag running. I'm going to make so much money per hour. But in fact, you actually hate frag running and it's just really, really boring for you. Then don't buy it for that reason because you don't make money money if you hate it and you don't do it. The point I'm trying to make here is very simple. You play the game what you like doing. You shouldn't just base your choices off what everybody else in the community says and what maybe the best money making methods are, even if you absolutely hate them. So now you come to the final part. You've made your decision about what you want to buy and now it comes to buying it. And all this section is, is I'm just going to be giving you some tips to help you try and save as much money as possible when you're actually buying stuff. Now there's one thing I see very commonly that people do. And what this is, is trying to max or semi-max out a sword that you're ultimately going to sell in about two weeks time anyway. A good example that I see for this is for instance the liver dagger or the flower proof or something like that. But when you're adding like an additional modifier, like you're putting on the art of war or you're putting on those fumings, you're kind of actually devaluing the price because you invest 5 million into it, but realistically you can only sell it for around 1 to 2 million coins more expensive than if you didn't put anything on it, meaning that you instantly lose around 3 million coins at least. And whilst I don't want to contradict what I said earlier about just playing the game for enjoyment, if you're maxing out a sword that you're just going to be selling out pretty soon anyway, then you're kind of wasting your own money. But if that's something you enjoy, then you know what? There's no one stopping you. But then again, you also don't want to take it the other end of the spectrum, where you have like a, something like a Hyperion, which you're probably not going to sell, and but yeah, we, we don't want to talk about that. Now I'm going to move on to the second mistake when people buy items. Now when you go and purchase an expensive item, or are thinking about purchasing it, what you should consider is whether it's cheaper to just buy it on the AH or craft it yourself. Now usually, usually, not always, it's cheaper if you have the recipe to craft the item yourself. Obviously if you don't have the recipe then you don't have that liberty, but anyway, the point still stands. For instance, when I crafted my Terminator, I didn't just buy the Terminator outright on the auction house because I calculated it before and found it was a lot more expensive and turns out I think I saved around 30 to 40 million coins. And although the orders did take quite a while to fill, as in it was literally around 30,000 enchanted quartz, it was still definitely worth saving that amount of money. However, if you look at an example, like the Juju Shortbow here, it cost 6.6 .6 million coins in AH, and the craft cost for the Juju Shortbow is around 9 million coins, so please don't do this. So after you've either crafted it, then you're going to have to go and enchant it or some sort. Now usually, if you're buying it enchanted, it's probably going to turn out cheaper just because a lot of people, they enchant something by themselves 
and then they sell it on the auction house but then there's so many people selling it that whenever you sell something like that you're almost always going to make a loss what i'm talking about here is that if you have something like a juju showboy for example which is around 7 million coins if you slap a recon and five fumings on it and hot potato books just because those modifiers are worth around 11 million coins you definitely won't be able to sell it for 17 million coins instead for this example you're only going to be able to sell it probably for around 9 million coins and i know the juju shortbow is obviously a bit of a weird example because it's got a requirement change but still this is this concept applies to every single item that you're going to buy all that i'm trying to say here is that when you're buying something relatively expensive always just check whether it's cheaper to craft it or enchant it yourself or if you're better off just buying it straight off the auction house and don't think it's the same for every item because trust me it's not and with the end of the last section i just want to reiterate that in skyblock there's so many different routes that you can choose and it's your money that's your choice and while there could be different purchases to help you progress quicker ultimately i don't think there's really a wrong decision in skyblock because the game naturally as it's designed is so open so just do whatever you want to do and have fun anyways thank you for watching and i hope to see you next week bye